I feel like Lawrence Welk. A wonderful, a wonderful. Thank you, Nancy and Alinda. I was just checking to make sure there weren't any people under there. So there were two of y'all that played. It's a lot of bells for two people. Okay, who is here visiting today? There's one. Wait, hang on. We're, we're looking for where are you from, how'd you hear about us, and what's your favorite color? I'm from upstate New York uh, by Saratoga, and we are now going to be, or are, we just got our license plates the other day, Tennessee residents. Well, congratulations! And we're building a house over by Rockwood by Watts Bar Lake, and the house isn't completed yet. So I was fortunate to find this church, a wonderful Lutheran church, um, right close to the Glade, where we're staying at a timeshare for a few weeks, and um, looks like a great congregation. Thank and you. And where, where is that? Oh, you mean here. <laughs> I see. That's good. I knew right that. Right here, right here. I, I knew that. Well, thank you. It's and, good to... And I have, I have to say that the uh, website was awesome. I just loved seeing what you wrote about all the people that have come from everywhere across the United States, and... A lot of retired people. And, well, um, you, you, made, you made the information technology and communication team very happy. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Now, that's the, that's the way you do a visitor announcement there. Oh, that would be important. We, we did, you did. It, we didn't get your name. Oh, that's myself. I'm Betty Cristiano. Betty. We are glad you are here. Any others? Okay, then ready thyself because you have a whole bunch of announcements. <clears throat> Simmons and Kerr are rehabbing at Good Samaritan, both doing well. They're, they're on the upswing. Gloria Flores is home after her stint in the hospital. Uh, took a lot of fluid off. She's back home. Uh, that will be an ongoing deal, so keep Gloria and her family in your prayers. I found out this morning, for those of you that make fun of me for getting up early, I got a text at 5 o'clock. <clears throat> Paul Cronow is in our hospital, uh, so we're, I'm, I will find out uh, after church what's going on. He hadn't broken anything, so hopefully we'll get him tuned up and sent back home. So, oh, and, and Dave Farber was in the hospital, UT Med. Uh, they're not sure what it is. It's not a stroke. It's not a UTI. They don't know what it is, but he got all of a sudden perked up and got all better on Friday. So, Hopefully, he's just home and Linda is keeping him away from the phone. So, we, we, think, he is, we think he is doing well. Uh, okay, um, intention cards. We, your, your brothers and sisters last night were the test group and they did just fine. So, all will be well. Here's how it's going to work. The offering plates will make their way among you and end up at the back. I will bring the box, come down the center and start on the back row and go side to side. So if you would pass your intention cards toward the center aisle, I will come forward with the box and pick them up. If you've forgotten yours, if you left it at home, whatever it is, get a hold of us during the week and we will add it to the box. Fear not, all, all will be well. But then when we get all the way to the front, you will stand, and the rest of the gifts will come forward. I will get the intention cards from the ushers, and then we'll be back to regular order. And you'll say, oh, that was so easy. Okay. Uh, oh, okay, yes. We've got lots of uh, greenery here. So if you are concerned about entangling yourself in the greenery, feel free to stand at the communion rail. That's okay. It still counts. 
<clears throat> you can stand or kneel, your call. We want to empower individual decision making. Uh, we are on the lookout for walkers. The cupboard is bare here in our orthopedic lend lease department. So if you have a walker you are not using, we will be. Ha- there's, there's a walker. Yay! Okay, well, we'll take it off your hands. Thank you. That would be, that would be, because we have folk, we had a couple folks looking for walkers, and we usually have several, and we're, we're, the cupboard is bare. Okay, any, any, uh, oh, yes, ma'am. In the midst of downsizing and moving, I forgot about Red Light, and it's next Sunday. Oh, my. So, we're just going to do pizza. <coughs> Yeah, I was going to say, well, yeah, I could see that one coming. She wants like 20s, and yeah, I knew what she meant. So this, this month, instead of cooking, it'll just be find you and get you some money so we can. Can everybody hear that? Bread of Life this month is going to be pizza. So if you have dollars you wish to contribute, send them to Joe. Bills go to Ron, so you can send Ron the invoice and. Let's see, so, 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 Neil Community Walkers, okay, good. Uh, any, anything else? All right, then prepare yourself. We have, um, I, I don't even know how to describe it. Just prepare yourself. Oh, wow. Look at all these beautiful, beautiful Christmas decorations. <gasps> We're so lucky. <gasps> but do you know what? That means, oh, no, that means we have to go shopping. Do you know how hard it is to shop for some people? Oh, my. And then some people take things back, and they don't like them. (gasps) What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Oh, save me, Kay. I gotcha. Oh, thank you. Have you heard of Good Gifts? No. Good Gifts is a program by Elka, and it's fantastic. If you've got hard people to buy for, like my brother who's a pain, he's a big business guy. So a micro loan works really well for him. You just take an ornament from the tree or get the catalog. Look at all the wonderful things they have. There's a a poster out in the Narthex that tells you exactly your steps, exactly what to do. You can call it. You can mail it. You can do it online. There are all kinds of things. You can bring it back to the church office. We'll take care of it. There are wonderful gifts in here. They go from $10 up to well, I think about 500, but you know, you don't have to do that. You can do whatever you want. But these gifts are so wonderful, and you just take it and you send it in. There are things like bees and goats and hogs. Do you mean I get a goat? Not exactly. Oh, good, because I don't think the Glade would approve of a goat. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. Oh, good. What happens is yes. that that goat is paid for, and it's sent to some country here in the world that is, there are people who are starving, there are people who need things. So those animals, those things that you send, go to those people so they can help feed their family and take care of their community. Oh, good. So they're okay to have goats. They're okay to have oh. goats. <laughs> So, remember, there's a tree in the narthex. If you turn around, there's a beautifully decorated tree. There's a big one back there with all kinds of lights. And then there's a small one. Are going to tell them about that one, t- too? Yes, oh, we are. <laughs> yes, we are. The small one is not good gifts. It's something that we do here in our church. It's our salt and light classroom at Martin School. And as you probably know, costs are going up all the time. Teachers have to supplement their incomes their supplies at their school with their income. They buy all the extra supplies their classes need. So we contacted the school. We have a bunch of little ornaments. There are They're tiny, so you're going to have to get out your magnifying glasses. There are little bitty reindeer and Christmas trees and snowmen. And on each one, there's a gift that you could buy. I'll have two baskets under that table next week. Bring them in. We're going to collect them until Epiphany. Bring those in, and then we'll take them back to the school. There are things like can be used for treats for the children. There are things like blankets because some of them don't have them in their homes. Mm. So there are all kinds of wonderful little presents, not too expensive. So take one, two, three ornaments and bring those back for us. Awesome. Well, thank you for saving me. (gasps) Anytime, Jenny. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. (sighs) (laughs) Yeah, little teeny 
tiny ornaments. Okay. <laughs> hey, fine job. Oh, I did forget. I had one other announcement. We're, aside from Walker's, one of, one of our members who will remain nameless is looking for a pillow for use during worship so he can get a nap during the service. Oh, now see, I wasn't going to rat you out, brother. I wasn't going to say anything. So if anybody has a pillow, I've forgotten to bring him a pillow for the last couple of weeks. So any spare pillows when you're bringing your walkers up, if you would, that would be appreciated as well. As you are able, I invite you to stand for the brief order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who opens the heavens and draws near to us with salvation. God is patient and merciful, desiring all to come to repentance, trusting this promise of grace as community gathered here. We confess our sin. Everlasting God, you love justice and you hate wrongdoing. We confess the fear, greed, and self-centeredness that make us reluctant to work against oppression. We are complicit in systems of exploitation. We choose comfort over courage. We are careless with creation's bounty. Look upon us with mercy. Turn our hearts again to you. Make us glad to do your will and walk in your ways for the sake of our waiting world. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. God clothes you with garments of salvation and covers you with robes of righteousness. In the tender compassion of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. God's covenant is eternal and God's blessings rest upon us all. Amen. Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit is with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, help mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. and come. May your merciful protection awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Release us, 
reeds shall be what long was crooked, and the rougher places plain. Let our hearts be true and humble, as befits his holy reign. For the glory of the Lord now on earth is shed abroad, and the flesh shall see the token that God's word is ever broken. A reading from Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Hazard, serve your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God. And let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O Lord of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. And our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. You have made so strong for yourself. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord, our hosts. Let your face shine upon us and 
A reading from 1 Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. According to St. Mark, the 13th chapter, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. Stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day and hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or at dawn or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I got to tell you, sometimes I really miss a few minutes with Andy Rooney. You remember that show? You remember that voice? Have you ever noticed... When God sets out to change the world, he sends a baby. I don't know if Andy ever said that, but he should have. It's true. First it was the infant in the bull rushes of Egypt. Then John the Baptist. Then a child born in a manger in the backwater of Bethlehem. God comes in unexpected ways. God's self-disclosure through the biblical narrative is usually quiet and low-key because we're busy looking somewhere else. It catches us by surprise because we are unprepared. We just don't expect it. The advent of Jesus' birth is no exception. The good news for this day is that God is coming. Take heed whether that is heard as good news or bad news depends to large degree on your location, where you happen to be and under what circumstances you find yourself when you hear it. Today's message is the same. Ready or not, good or bad, God is coming. Keep awake. 
Today's text has strong, and here's your 50 cent word for the month, eschatological imagery. Ooh. That's fun to trot out at the dinner party. Eschatology, the study of the last things, the end times. The moon will be darkened. The stars will be falling. The powers will be shaken. Stuff is going to happen. Sounds a lot more relatable to the second coming than this cute and cuddly six-pound baby Jesus in the manger. Mark 13, Luke 21, and Matthew 24 are all part of what's called the little apocalypse. It's the happy hunting ground for people who are fascinated by the end of the world. All three borrow from the book of Daniel, the abomination of desolation, to come up with all of the frightening imagery. Mark 13 figures prominently in books by doomsday preachers who want to keep everybody scared, paying attention, sitting on the edge of their chair. So why do we find this here at the beginning of Advent. Perhaps the revised common lectionary people just made a mistake. Why on earth would you choose this for the beginning of Advent? Because the message is the message of Advent. Whether preparing for the first or the final event, Mark stresses the same message. Be on guard. Be alert. And then three times, keep awake. No pillows. Keep awake. In short, pay attention. Don't be numb from the neck up. Don't go through life on autopilot. Be engaged in the process. It is fitting, almost as though someone planned it out, that we have intention cards on this day. Our intention our intentional action and our commitment to the gospel ministry in and through Christ Lutheran Church. Our intention to be engaged, alert. Our intention to live into the future that God calls us to be and to create. When was the last time you got really excited about something? got the lump in your throat or felt the shivers go down your spine. It's not cool anymore. Perhaps it's the 24-hour news cycle. I don't know what it is, but it's become fashionable to simply be loud and cynical and caustic, to find fault with everyone and everything, to be thoughtful and hopeful and optimistic is out of fashion and will bring you no end of grief in the general population. It's chic to denigrate and to run down our neighbors, to find fault and catalog all the reasons why something will not work. What? We can't do intention cards this way. Yeah, you can. It'll be okay. Because stewardship invites you to return to a different time. A time of wonder, a time of possibility before cynicism had darkened our countenance. Right? Stewardship invites you to reclaim that wide-eyed wonder of years gone by. Wonder that just drifts away so gradually you almost don't see it going. Advent presents us with the opportunity to reclaim a sense of wonder, to remember. And I don't know, maybe it was because South Carolina didn't have much money for education, but when I was in elementary school, we used to get uh, one of those little styrofoam coffee cups. Teacher would say, go out and put dirt in it. We didn't have soil, we had dirt. Go put dirt in it, and then we put a little seed in it. Did anybody ever do this? You put the seed in and, oh, something grew. I don't know what it was, but it was, it was cool, it grew. That's wonder, right? The cynic was, oh, well, that's stupid. What's the point? I'm not going to do that. There's no future in that. 
But the sense of wonder allows a child to look at that and ask, I wonder what else can happen. My mother, my sainted mother, we used to have, um, I guess this is memory lane day, we used to have um, little white, some kind of cup-like thing. It had a little stem on it. We would get pudding every so often in it. But when she would cook carrots, she would save the butt end of the carrot and put it in these little white dishes, and we'd have like three or four little carrot butts in this dish. Anybody else do that? Have you ever put carrots in a little dish? Okay, good. And every morning, I'd run down to breakfast to see, did it grow a carrot? No, but we got lots of green leafy stuff. It was just something to be amazed at. Where does all that come from? I don't know. But that's a sense of wonder. That's the opportunity of Advent, to look again at a story. Instead of saying, well, that doesn't make any sense. You can't take a nine-month pregnant woman and bounce her around on a donkey. Nobody would ever make it to Bethlehem. (laughs) Or you can look at the story and say, look at what God is doing. Coming in the most unexpected and unanticipated of ways it interjects into our bloodstream not only wonder but mystery and expectation and possibility. During Advent, we experience the reality of God's grace, which is beyond our explanation and reason. Because, brothers and sisters, we don't have to explain it in order to celebrate it. I can't tell you why my wife loves me. But I celebrate that fact, and I'm very glad that she does. And perhaps something is similar for you. During Advent, we have the opportunity to walk on tiptoe with hushed voices because we got the feeling that something is getting ready to happen. Listen again to that story. You've heard it before. Right? But don't allow the familiarity of the story to enable you to jump to the end. That's what Walmart does. Right? Walmart doesn't care a fig about Advent. As soon as we get through with the summer, hey, Christmas is coming. Take time. <laughs> Take time for Advent. Take time to hear and receive what God is giving you, a story that will be read in every language, in every dialect, in every part of the world, a story that will be celebrated throughout the globe, a story devoid of sentimental embroidery that covers up the realism, right? Those characters, as they appear in the, at least in the biblical narrative, are not haloed little figurines that you're going to see on the Hallmark Channel. They're real people. Mary and Joseph are real people getting ready to be parents, scared to death, got to travel. And yes, Joseph forgot to make reservations and he's fixing to get in all kinds of trouble, but still they travel. Because that's what they're instructed to do. The baby, just like every other baby, right, doesn't miraculously enter the world reading war and peace, enters the world yelling and screaming and kicking and crying and spitting up and doing other bodily functions. That's what babies do. That's what this one does. And he will grow up in a world that will never really understand him, grow up among people who will reject him. Oh, and my favorite, the shepherds. When we trot out those manger scenes, boy, those shepherds look good. They're all cleaned up and standing there with their little crooks. They look like something out of a Roman play. Not at all what the shepherds of the first century looked like. Those guys were kind of rough around the edges. These were the migrant workers of the first century. Chances are they're sitting around a fire on the hillside, passing an adult beverage around that fire, trying to keep warm. And that's 
that's what makes this story all the more amazing. Into this chaos, God chooses to enter. Into the midst of all that is broken, God chooses to arrive. So even now, as we look around and say, whoa, the world's a mess. There's fighting and wars and rumors of war. Even now, there is hope. Hope in the midst of chaos and brokenness and imperfection. There's the feeling that something significant is about to happen. Keep alert. Watch. Be ready. Stay awake. God is present and active still. Amen. Together with the whole church, we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, 
Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Call your church into holy fellowship as we await the restoration of all things. Re-energize your faithful people to live with hope and compassion, especially those who serve us as missionaries near and far. Center us on your promise to come among us and make all things new. Merciful God. All creation signals your presence, O God the vastness of the cosmos, the turn of the seasons, and living things that both rest and flourish. Rekindle our commitment to care for the earth. Merciful God, let the nations tremble at your holy presence, that justice and liberation prevail in all corners of the earth. Restore peace to nations in conflict. Teach righteousness to corrupt leaders and systems Bring stability to areas facing uncertain futures. We continue to pray for the nation of Ukraine. We pray for the nation of Israel. And we pray for the people of Palestine. Merciful God. Enrich the spirits of all who feel hopeless, fearful, or despairing. Stay close to those who await healing or relief. Especially Betty A., Darlene D, Helen D, Jean C, Jan D, Jude D, David F, Roz K, Pastor Joe, Darby O, Dwayne S, Miriam S. Deliver all who are in need. Merciful God. Be with those who keep awake at night. Nurses working overnight shifts. Caregivers of newborn and aging. Stargazers. Those who are anxious. Those who are traveling. Reveal to all that dark can be a place of calm and comfort when filled with your presence. Merciful God. We pray for this nation, our President Joseph Biden, Tennessee's Governor Bill Lee and his wife Maria, Cumberland County Mayor Alan Foster, and all first responders. Merciful God, you have sent out your angels and gathered your faithful people from every time and every place, calling them into one fellowship of saints. Bless the witness of those who dwell in your eternal presence, Juliana Weeks and Francis Xavier, whom the church commemorates this day. Merciful God. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to lift silently now before God's throne of grace those cares, concerns, and celebrations which you carry in your hearts today.
Listen to these and all our prayers, God of hosts. Prayers offered aloud, prayers uttered silently, prayers which we struggle to find the ability to put into words. Receive them all and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. As you are able, I invite you to stand. Peace of the risen Christ is with you always. Share that peace with one another.
gracious God, you have entrusted us with the awe-inspiring task of sharing the message of the gospel. We humbly dedicate these intention cards to your use. We are comforted by the knowledge that you will multiply these gifts. Keep our intentions before us as we travel into the future of mission and ministry. We pray that you will allow our gifts to become a resource that lifts the shadows of despair from the dark corners of people's lives. We recognize that only you can restore faith to the faithless, hope to the hopeless, and love to the loveless. And yet still you invite us to become partners with you in renewing creation and bringing reconciliation to relationships with you, with each other, and with the world. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. God, our provider, by your merciful hand, the abundance springs up from the earth. Receive and bless these gifts which come from your bounty. Let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. Broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Together as community gathered here, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope 
for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel. Word of God incarnate. Power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together the prayer which our Lord taught us to pray. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In this meal, righteousness and peace come together. Take your place at this table. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Come to take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us. The words you hear spoken at this altar are spoken also for you if you elect to commune in your pews. The body of Christ is given for you. and The blood of Christ is shed for you. After we commune the choir, you will come forward at the direction of the ushers, standing or kneeling. We commune this day by intinction. There is grape juice on one side and wine on the other.
Please stand. Generous God, in bread and cup, you reveal your glory for all people to see together. Nourished by this meal, send us out to proclaim your good news of liberation and release, brought to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior. The God of peace bless you, the love of Christ sustain you in hope, and the anointing of the Spirit remain upon you now and forever. Amen. of Christ Lutheran Church, who are we? Christ Lutheran Church is a caring community of the baptized people of God, saved by the gift of grace, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and sent into the world to share the good news of God's love. Go in peace. Keep awake.